to Joe Garrett along with George Cash, welcoming you to the seventh game of the 1952 World Series. This is it. Forget the rest of the season. Forget the playoffs, the averages, what you did in this ballpark, that ballpark. It's all wrapped up today. And it'll be Ralph Perry for the Yankees and Jack Sanford for the San Francisco Giants. Sky is high here. There's not a cloud in the sky. And it's going from left field to right field. And they will be skating towards the right field line. Now, this broadcast is authorized on the broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication we broadcast or other news of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. <laughs> The glass has been cut in the outfield. Yesterday, it was not cut in the outfield. It was still a bit damp. The ground crew couldn't get out there, but they were able to work on it. And this ground crew, you certainly have to tip your hat to them. They have really been putting in the extra hours, extra work, and extra detail to get the field in a great shape that it is. The outfield grass is cut, and that was another thing that the outfielders were concerned about. Just how would that ball react once it scooted off that grass? It's a little bit faster than it was yesterday, but not that much is the way the ball players were saying it. The thing that is bothering the outfielders more than anything is the win. The lineup for this big seventh game of the World Series for the Yankees is the same lineup that Ralph Hauk has been using throughout the series. Kubrick leads off at shortstop. Batting second is the second baseman, Bobby Richardson. Batting third is the left fielder, Tom Trace. Trace in left field. Batting fourth. This is center fielder Mickey Mantle. Mantle in center field. Batting fifth, the right fielder Roger Maris. Maris in right field. Batting sixth, the catcher Elson Howard. Howard the catcher. Batting seventh is Moose Stalin, the first baseman. Stalin at first base. Batting eighth is the third baseman. Cletus Boyer. Boyer at third base. And batting ninth is the pitcher Ralph Perry. For the San Francisco Giants, lean off is Philippe. Alou, A L O U, Philippe Alou in right field. Batting second to second baseman Chuck Hiller. Hiller to second baseman. Batting third to center fielder Willie Mays. Mays in center field. Batting fourth the left fielder McCovey. Willie McCovey in left field. Batting fifth the first baseman Orlando Cepeda. Cepeda first base. Batting sixth is the catcher Haller. Tom Haller the catcher. Batting seventh the third baseman Jim Davenport. Davenport at third base. Batting eight, it's the shortstop, Jose Pagan. Pagan, the shortstop. And batting ninth, it's the pitcher, Jack Stanford. Stanford against Ralph Carey. Both ball clubs certainly teed up for this ball game. That has to be the understatement of the year. How do you get up? Uh, get up any more for a ball game than these ball clubs have for this one. The Giants, they've been counted out 900 times during the regular season. They kept coming back, coming back. This whole series has been one of really alternating victories. That's the way it's been. The Yankees won the first game by the score of 6-2. Giants came back to win the second one, 2-0. The Yankees won the third game, 3-2. Giants won the fourth game, 7-3. The Yankees won the fifth game, 5-3. And... Yesterday, the Giants won it behind Billy Pierce, 5 to 2. And today, this is it. One whole year wrapped up in one ball game. The umpires just making their way out, coming down that first baseline. Manager Ralph Hauk, all the New York Yankees, comes out of their dugout from the third base side, and ready to hand them the lineup card. And Whitey Lachlan. Our coach, uh, manager Alvin Dark, hands in the giant lineup. The big Stan Landis will be the plate umpire. So the stage is set. Sanford against Terry. Jack Sanford on the mound. Does a little of the work that the groundskeeper's been doing for a couple of days. He did their favorite spot on the pitching slab. Pitchers like to do it. Hitters like to do it in the batter's box to find that comfortable spot. And George Carroll, I can't imagine that until you get that first ground ball and get hit by that first foul tip, it's going to be a little tough to get comfortable for a game like this because those butterflies certainly have to be flying around. There's no doubt about it, Joe. I was down on the field before the ball game, as you were, and the ball players seemed to be a relaxed group of athletes. But 
They cannot be that relaxed here today in this all-important seventh ball game. As you said a moment ago, the entire season is wrapped up into one ball game here today. A lot of these fellows have been through it before. Some of them going through it for the first time. But the tension has got to be the same for everybody. This is it, and they all feel it. And I think this feeling even prevails through this tremendous crowd here today. As the Giants taking the field just a moment ago, they let out a tremendous roar, of course, for the hometown team, but they feel the tension right here in the stands. Tony Cuba stepping in to lead off for the Yankees here in the first inning. Sanford gets ready, and here's the first pitch of the ball game. He tries to bunt, and one strike to Cuba. Tony has a 280 batting average. He's been to the plate 25 times, and he has seven hits. Tony has no home runs. He's batted in one run. This will be the third meeting in this series between Sanford and Terry. They've won one game each. Sanford won here in Candlestick and Ralph back in New York. A pitch to Cuba. Outside, a fastball off the corner. One ball, one strike. In the first two ball games at Sanford pitch, he was behind the batters a lot, but he didn't walk many. Coming in with a 2-0 and pitch, most of the time with good pitches. Here's a pitch. Outside, another pass ball in the corner. Ball two and strike one. It'll be Kubek, Richardson, and Tommy Trace for the Yankees here in the first inning. The seventh game of the 1962 World Series. Time for ready. A 2-1 pitch. Here's a fly ball. It's the center field. Willie Mays moving in. He's there and he makes the catch. Tony Kubek out on a fly to center. Up the second baseman, Bobby Richardson. Bobby's a right handed batter. He has a 160 batting average. Four hits and 25 trips in the series. He has no home runs, no runs batted in. Giants playing straight away and not too deep. Everybody's going to play shallow in left field today. Here's a pitch to Bobby. Ball, it's inside a curve ball. Mr. the corner. One ball and a strike. Willie McCovey is in left field for the Giants. May is in center, and Felipe Lou playing in right field today. Sanford into the windup. This is a 1 0 pitch. Curve down low. Up this one over the plate, but too low. Ball two, and no strike. Sanford didn't like the call on it too much. Stopped and looked in to Stan Lambert. Just on the first two hitters, George, and we might be able to get a pattern. He threw nothing but fastball to two back, nothing but serves to Richardson. Here's the pitch. It's down low. A fastball low in hand. 3-0 to Bobby. Tommy Trace, the left fielder, is waiting in the on-deck circle. Yankees batting in the first inning with one out and no one on. A ball three and a no strike count. And for taking a little time, get ready. Here's the pitch. Down low, he walks in. Bobby Richardson draws a walk. He put a runner at first base with one out. And the batter will be Tom Trace, the left fielder. Tommy's batting average posted at 333 for this series. He hit the 24 trips. Tommy has one home run and four runs batted in. A home run, a three-run homer coming against Stanford at Yankee Stadium. Trace is a quick batter. He's batting left-handed against Stanford. Here's the pitch. Right, he got a fastball over the outside corner. Davenport is playing in close at third. Jimmy's about even with the bag. Cepeda holds against the runner at first. And both Pagan and Diller have moved in a couple of steps. They are cheating on the double play. Here's the one strike pitch. Outside, this one just off the corner. Sanford is aiming everything for the outside part of the plate to these left-handed batters. One ball and one strike. Got a couple of spots that will help him out if he can get him to hit that ball into left field because left center field will be a real tough job to hit one out of here the way that wind is blowing. Sanford checks his runner. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. He swings and hits a pop fly behind third. Davenport is chasing it. He's over near the stands and he makes the play. Making a fine play as he stayed with a high pop fly, caught it, and crashed into the barrier. 
Uh, two down. And the batter will be Mickey Mantle. George, remember in the ball game over here, uh, the second one, Tom Haller made some fine catches with some small balls that stay in play. Anything that's hit towards the third base line, you better chase it because it'll blow back in play. Mantle with an 091 batting average. He's been to the plate 22 times. He has two hits. Mickey has no home runs in this series. No runs batted in. He's batting left-handed against Sanford. Here's a quick throw to first. Richardson back in time. Bobby at first base with two outs here in the first inning. There's no score. Sanford gets that. A pitch to Mantle. Ball. It's down low. One ball and no strike. Some of the riders were sitting house on the bench before the ball game about using the same lineup every day. Ralph said, one thing I found out early in my managing career is go with the best you have every day. Don't shuffle the lineup around. Just put the best you've got in there and play them. One ball, no strikes. The pitch to Mickey. Strikes. He's got a fastball over him. Right down the middle of that one. The Giants are deep and around to the right for Mantle. A bright, sunshiny afternoon. A strong breeze blowing in from left field. We said before the wind normally quiet here until about 3 o'clock, but today it started moving in about 10 o'clock this morning. Here's the pitch to Mickey. He swings and hits a high fly ball to left field. Willie McCovey is waiting on it. Still waiting. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left. And the score at the end of the first half, the first inning. The Yankees nothing with the Giants coming to bat. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but what's that they're raising up there? That's the prime rate. Going up today. Oh, I see. Some days it goes up, some days it goes down. And what exactly does the prime rate do? I mostly it scares people silly. Little higher. If the bank prime rate is scaring you out of a new car, ask your GM dealer about GMAC. GMAC has financing right now at rates that make sense. So get that new Chevy, Pontiac, Olds, Buick, Cadillac, or GMC truck you want with help from GMAC. The financing people from General Motors. You're long to die of thirst this summer if it has to depend on the weather to get the water it needs. So be sure you've got quality hoses you can depend on from True Value Hardware Store. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you True Value Nylon Reinforced Vinyl Hoses are designed to stand up to the heat and remain flexible in cold weather. And right now you can get their 60-foot True Value Hose for $9.99 or the super rugged 75-foot length for $14.99. Both have 5 8 inch inner diameter and are available only from participating True Value Hardware Stores. And now, more action from Game 7 of the 1962 World Series. Well, no scores. We go into the bottom of the first inning. It'll be Philippe Lou to lead off for the Giants. He'll be followed by the second baseman, Chuck Miller, and then the center fielder, Willie Mays. Ralph Carey completing the warm up coffee. Elston Howard goes down the second with a throw, and we're ready to go. Alou, a right-handed batter, has a 318 batting average. Seven hits and 22 trips. Alou has batted in one run. A very large and enthusiastic crowd on hand here today, and needless to say, giant rooters here. Ralph Terry gets ready. A pitch to Alou. He swings and pops it up behind the plate. Chris Howard coming back. It's going to be out of play. This one back in the crowd. One strike to a lose. Perry won 23 ball games and lost 12 during the regular season. And as we said previously, he's won one and lost one in this World Series. A lose taking a little time before he gets back in. Leaf right down on the end of the bat. Terry into the windup. The pitch. He swings and hits a pop fly outside of first base. Cowan is over there waiting. He's got it. Moose was battling the high sky on that one. Felipe Lou fouls to the first baseman. I'll bring up the second baseman, Chuck Yeller. 
Ducks a left-handed batter. He has a 318 batting average. Seven hits and 22 saves. Duck has one home run in this series. That was a grand slam homer. He's batted in five runs. Duck goes to bat. Perry, a tall, slender right-hander. Next to sign with Elson Howard. The pitch. Ball, it's outside. Miller uses a big thick handle bat, and during batting practice, this, it was almost game conditions for him as he sprayed the ball all over the ballpark. He wasn't trying to hit one out of here. He was just trying to hit it right up the middle and to left field, just hitting over the ball, hoping he could get the ball down, get the ground ball base hit. Here's a 1-0 and pitch. He swings and fouls it back from the crowd. One ball, one strike. He's had a couple of hits in the left field, and the Yankees are playing in that way. Didn't get a chance to ask Alvin Dark, but I just wonder if it was an artist from him, George. But batting practice was no playful matter with these Giants. Larry Jansen threw a lot of curveballs, and they were trying to do something with him. A pitch to Hillary. Swings and hits a high fly ball down the left field line. Here's Trice racing in the foul territory. He can't get it. The ball is in the seat. One ball and two strikes to Hiller. Trace had a little bit of trouble as he got near the bullpen. Uh, there was no chance to make the play, but I see trouble because he stumbled on the mound, and he's kind of flexing his legs out there now because uh, it's a high mound uh, in the bullpen, and he stumbled as he got near the wall. The wind does not seem to be blowing quite as hard now as it did at the start of this ball game. One weatherman said here today the wind would be dying down during the afternoon. Harry gets ready. Here's the one-two pitch. Ball is down low. He's got the fastball over the two low. The count is even to Hiller at two and two. We're in the bottom of the first inning. In case you join this late, there's no score in the ball game. Giants batting, one out with no one on. Here's the two-two pitch. He swings and hits the bounce to the first. Sauron has it. Cuts on the bag and Chuck Hiller is out. Well, two down and here's the center fielder, Willie May. Favorite here in San Francisco, and well, he should be. Willie's batting average in this series posted at 250. Six hits and 24 trips. Harry delivers. There's a fly ball. It's the left field. On his way, moving in. And got it to size the tires. Willie May sending a fly ball to stretch in left field. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of one full inning of play, the Giants nothing, the Yankees nothing. Game 7 of the World Series of 1962 continues after this. You're listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game 7 of the World Series of 1962. <laughs> Now we move along into the top of the second inning. There's no score in the ball game. The Yankees had a base runner in the first inning. Bobby Richardson drew a walk, but he was stranded at first base. His strike fouled to the third baseman, and Mantle fly to left field. Roger Maris will be the leadoff man for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Elson Howard and then Bill Cowan. Roger has a 211 batting average, four hits and 19 trips. One home run and five runs batted in. Here's Bamford first pitch. Ball. Five to run up to the right end. Maris was going to bunt. He raced up in front of the box, took the pitch, and Landis went up to the right end. Bamford ready. The pitch. There's a line drive to the first base. Maris hit that one like a bullet. A liner right straight to Davenport at first base. Right in his glove. Well, he's one away, and the batter will be Elston Howard. 
Ellie has a 176 batting average, three hits in this series, and 17 trips. Strong right-handed batter. Here's the pitch. Foul ball is back on the screen. One strike. Sanford using the little pitch motion on that pitch the first time he's used it today, but he's used it a lot throughout this series. I was talking to some of the Yankees on the plane coming out here from New York, and they said it was effective, very effective, especially with two strikes. George is also a telltale for manager Alvin Dark. When he gets sloppy with the leg movements, uh, the tip-off is getting tired. The pitch to Howard. There's a ground ball hit to the third baseman. Davenport flips it over to first. He's out. Elston Howard goes out. Davenport to Cepeda. Up two down, and the batter will be Bill Scowron. Bill has a 214 batting average. He has three hits and 14 trips. One run batted in. Bill right down on the end of the bat. Sanford gets ready. Here's the first pitch. Ball, it's inside. One ball and no strike. To give you an idea how hard the wind is blowing in from left field, Scarron unloaded one in batting practice that looked like it was going into the bay, and it hit the top of the fence and bounded back. The one and no pitch. A swing and a foul tip. And falling right at the plate. One ball, one strike. We're in the top of the second inning. There's no score in the ball game. Two outs with no one on. Howard taking a little time. That ball might have hit him on the hand. He did miss him, George, and he walked out to kind of get his bearing back as he put the ball to Stanford. Now he'll take a little bit of time given the sign. One ball, one strike to Scowron. Stanford gets ready. Here's the pitch. Curve ball, it's up high. Ball two and strike one. Stanford had great success against Howard and Scowron at Yankee Stadium. He was keeping the curve ball low and on the outside part of the plate. Which is a good way to pick anybody, Bill. Huh. Make an announcer out of all those guys you keep it there. Stanford taking a little time as he looks in. Here's the 2 1 pitch. He swings and bounces his foul off to the left. That'll leave him count at two and two. How about those clubhouse meetings? When you get stuck, they always say, well, keep that fastball up and in before you get in and that curveball down. you got to get it down, though. And, of course, it's always high and tight, low and away, which is the perfect pitching pattern. If you could do that, that Hall of Fame would really be crowded with pitches. No hitters, definitely not. The only hitters that can hit that curveball low and outside, like Bob Skinner said, that's the ball players that have gone to announce and They can hit that curveball low and outside. A ball two and a strike two count to Scourin. Sanford taking too much time to see Bill, so he steps out. Moose just takes one step out of the box and looks out to Sanford, who just to say, what's the reason for the delay? Now he's back in. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Inside, he got the fastball too close. Three and two to Bill. Two outs with no one on here in the top of the second inning. There's no score. The seventh and final game of this 1962 World Series. Sanford ready. The pitch. There's a ground ball. It's slowly to the shortstop. But Don has it to throw to first. He's out. Bill Cowan goes out. Starts to first. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of the first half of the second inning. The Yankees nothing, the Giants nothing. Back with more action from this classic World Series game of 1962 after this.
Radio is presenting a rebroadcast of Game 7 of the 1962 World Series, the New York Yankees versus the San Francisco Giants. Now we move along into the bottom of the second inning. No score in the ballgame. Willie McCovey will lead off for the Giants. He'll be followed by Orlando Cepeda and then the catcher, Tom Hallett. It's Frankfurt against Perry here today in the seventh game. These pitchers meeting for the third time in this World Series. They each have a win. McCovey, a big left-handed batter, has a one in two batting average. Willie has two hits and eleven trips. He has one home run and one run batted in. The homer coming against Perry here at Candlestick Park. The Yankees moved deep and far to the right for McCovey. Here's the first pitch. Ball outside. One ball and outside. Perry, of course, will be trying to keep everything away from Willie. He'll want to hit that outside corner. McCovey looking for something inside that he can pull down that right field line. Here's the one and open. pitch. He swings and pops it up outside of first base. Here's Howard chasing it along with Sauer. And Elston Howard is trying to get play on it. He does. A tough play for Howard. He was looking right up into the sun over near the giant dugout, but he made the catch. Well, he's one away, and the batter will be Orlando Cepeda. batting average at 188. He has three hits in 16 trips. All three of Orlando's hits coming in yesterday's game. He has two runs batted in. Very ready. The pitch. There's a ground ball hit down the third baseline. It's foul. Boy, you're moving across the line. A one-strike shot. Orlando was having some fun in the clubhouse after the game, uh, sitting with the newspaper man. That how come uh, they waited until yesterday to come around? He said, I've been with the club for all World Series. Nobody come around. Of course, somebody just finally honestly gave the answer. He said, keep hitting him. He'll be around. Don't hit him. We'll see you. Here's the one strike pitch. Curve. It's in the dirt. Elston Howard goes down on both knees to block this one. One ball, one strike. The Yankees gave him a little bit to right center. He mantles just a little bit to the right of second base. Deep in the outfield. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike two. He tucks the corner with a good hard slider. One ball, two strikes. The player gets very deep in the box. Very ready. The 1-2 pitch. Curve down low. That will even the count at 2-2. Two two. Bottom of the second inning, there's one out with no one on. There's no score in the ball game. Only one base runner so far in this game. Bobby Richardson drew a walk in the first inning. Terry looking in. Here's the 2 2 pitch. He swings and foul tips it right into the mid of Elston Howard. A strikeout for Ralph Terry. That's two down. And the batter will be the catcher, Tom Howard. Tom has a 364 batting average. Four hits and 11 trips. Just one home run and three runs batted in. Tom's a tall left handed batter. Terry into the wind up. Here's the pitch. Frank, he's up the fastball over the corner. A one strike count to Tom Howler, batting in the second inning with two outs and no one on. The Yankees nothing and the Giants nothing. Terry pounds his glove. Here's the pitch. High pop fly behind shortstop. Too bad drifting back. Gage his eyes. He's got it. The sides retired. Tom Howard pops to the shortstop. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of two. The Giants nothing, the Yankees nothing. This original 1962 World Series broadcast will continue on the NBC Radio Network. NBC Radio Sports is presenting a classic World Series broadcast, Game 7 of 1962, featuring superstars Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Mickey Mantle, and Roger Maris. Well, at the end of two, there's no score. 
For the Yankees, no runs, no hits, no errors. For the Giants, no runs, no hits, no errors. It'll be Cletus Boyer to lead off. He'll be followed by Ralph Perry and then Tony Kubat. Jack Sanford still taking his warm-up tosses. Jack was a little slow getting out to the mound. Tom Holler makes the throw down to second base. Cleet Boyer steps in. We're ready to go here in the top of the third inning. Boy, this is it. All the pitchers are in the bullpen today. Even Billy Pierce for the Giants and Whitey Ford. Or the Yankees. Both said they would be ready to go again today. Boy, you're a right-handed batter. He has a 278 batting average. We've had five hits in the series and 18 trips. There's a line drive to right. A little is there. Boy, you hit that one like a bullet. Right straight to a little in right field. And the batter will be Ralph Perry. Here's Ralph coming on. Ralph is the on deck circle. He's just got a rosin on his hand. Willie Mays is the quarterback as far as the outfield is concerned, moving the guys around. He just moved McCovey in. And Willie plays pretty deep for just about everybody. With Ralph Perry up there, Willie Mays wanting McCovey to move in because that wind is blowing directly in. A real tough job hit one hard in the left field to get over his head. Barry, a right-handed batter. Sanford ready. Here's the first pitch. Strikes. He's got a fastball right down the middle. A one-strike count to Ralph Perry. He's batting with one out and no one on in the third inning. No score in the ball game. Sanford looking in. Here's the pitch. Strike two. He tucked the corner with this one. Strike two down. The Giants have shortened up all around. McCovey, Mays, and Alou shortened up and playing Ralph a little bit to right field. Sanford checks the sign. Here's the two-strike pitch. A swing of it. He tried to check it, but it's gone too far on the low curveball. Perry goes down swinging. The first strikeout in the ball game for Sanford. Two down. And the batter will be Tony Kubek. Tony sent a fly ball to Willie Mays his first time at bat. Tony, a left handed batter. Sanford ready. Here's the first pitch. A swing and a miss. Low curve at the knee. One strike to Kubek. The umpires today, Sam Landis is behind the plate, Jim Honachick at first base, Al Barlick at second base, Charlie Berry at third, Jim Burkhardt and Hank Stewart down the line. Here's a fastball outside. One ball and one strike to Kubek. Jim Burkhardt down the left field line and Hank Stewart down the right field line. Sanford gets ready. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside again, trying to catch the corner with a fastball. Ball two and strike one. It'll be a job for Kubek to try to hit a ball between McCovey and the line in left field. McCovey really caught in that line as if he wants to give Willie Mays as much running room as possible, George. Sanford into the windup. The 2-1 pitch. There's a ground ball to left field. A solid base hit for Kubek as he punched an outside fastball between Davenport and Pagan into left field. That's the first hit of the ball game. With the runner at first base with two outs. And the batter will be Bobby Richardson. Bobby drew a walk his first time at bat. Sanford wanted a new baseball. After two back punched that one to left field. Sam Landis makes his change. Keep an eye on Kubek at first base. He might be running here with two outs. He's thrown out. The Yankees would still have Bobby Richardson to lead off in the next inning. Here's the pitch. Ball, oh, it's up high. Bobby was ready to bunt. Shortened up. Took the high pitch. One ball and no strike. Gavin Ford has moved in close at third. Jimmy is playing about even with the bag right now. A scoreless ball game. We're in the top of the third inning. 
time for just that. Here's the one and open. No Inside. That ball in on the fifth. Ball two in his back. Josh has been having trouble getting the ball over to Bobby Richardson. He walked in his first time at bat on a 3-1 pitch. Now he's behind with a ball two and a no-side count. Got Texas runner at first base. Quick go to first. Two back back in time. Open this inning with a line drive to right. Here he struck out, and Kubek single to left field. Here's the pitch. Right, he got the fastball. Quick throw to first. Uh, Kubek back in time. Tony slipped. Fowler made a wide throw. A good throw would have had him at first base as Kubek slipped. Bell trying to get back to first base, and then he had to crawl to the bag. But Fowler's throw was wide, and Orlando Cepeda had no chance to put the tag on him. for the other base runners because Kubek wasn't really going anywhere. He was just trying to get back to first base. So he's putting his not solid. Here's the pitch to Richardson. Inside, he kept his swing on a high inside fastball. Three and one to Bobby. Richardson out of the box for a moment, looking down to third where he checks with Frankie Sarsetti to see if the hit sign is on for this 3-1 pitch. He's one of those guys, too, like to know that runner's going to break up that infield because he can pick his spot. And forget that. Here's the pitch. Down low, he walks him. Bobby Richardson walks again. That's two walks given up by Stanford both times. It's been Bobby. So the Yankees have runners at first and second with two outs. And the batter will be Tommy Slash, the left fielder. Tommy's 0 for 1. He fouled to Davenport his first time at bat. Well, this is the first threat of the ball game. Two on with two out. Giant play straight, pretty much straight away. Sanford gets up. Here's the first pitch. He swings and hits a high pop fly down the left field line. Gavin Ford is chasing it along with McCurvey, but it's going back in the crowd. A high pop fly down the left field line near the giant bullpen. The wind moving that one right back into the crowd. A one-strike count to Tommy Trace. Tommy has eight hits in this series. Kubek had seven going into this ball game. He's singled in this inning, so he's all tied with Tommy for a number of hits. Sanford taking a little time as he looks in. Boy, he doesn't want to make a mistake here. Here's the pitch. Ball outside. One and one to Trace. It was a three-run homer by Trace in Yankee Stadium that beat Stanford in the fifth game of the series. A three-run homer coming with a score tied at 2-2. Tommy chokes about a little bit as he waits. Here's a one-one pitch. Ball, it's up out. Ball two in sight one. Boy, you can hear the rumble through this crowd every time Sanford delivers a bad pitch. Mickey Mantle is in the on-deck circle, Joe. You can bet that's one thing that Howard reminded Sanford about as he went out to talk to him. The one defense that you can't come up with is the one for the base on balls. And with the wind the way it is here in this ballpark, you want him to hit the ball because right now it's blowing directly in. And it's not going to help any ball or hit anywhere. It's going to hurt it. But unless you get that ball in that strike zone, you're going to be in serious trouble. Fan forgets that. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Ball outside, way outside. 3 and 1 to Tommy Trace. Sanford is picking high today. That is something unusual for him. In the first two games, he was low, Joe. Right. And the two trip offs, as far as the. Pitching to Sanford is the leg motion. If he gets sloppy with that or gets the ball up, it's an indication that he's not really sharp. And he has to pitch down with everything. Jack taking a little time as he looks in. Yankees have runners at first and second with two outs. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Right through. Up the outside corner with a fastball. On the corner as he spread the needle. 
three and two to Tommy Strait. The runners will be moving. Three, two, and two out. Two back at second base. Bobby Richardson at first base. Stanford gets that. He whirls to throw to second. But holds the ball as nobody going over to cover. For the pickoff play at second base yesterday that did not work was a vital play in the ball game. Here's the pitch. A ground ball hit to the second baseman. Hiller has it. Here's a flip to first. Tommy Strait goes out to second and third. No runs in the inning on one hit. There were no errors. Two men left. And the score at the end of the first half of third inning. The Giants nothing. The Yankees nothing. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. Hi, Pat Summerall to remind you that good household help is hard to find, except at True Value Hardware Stores. There you'll find a selection of quality designed Rubbermaid products to provide helpful convenience all over the house. Use Rubbermaid stackable storage bins to organize kitchen utensils, or in the family room to store small toys and sewing notions. Rubbermaid shower accessories will help keep bathrooms looking neat. Plus, you'll find durable Rubbermaid pictures, waste baskets, and more at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. from Game 7 of the 1962 World Series. Now we go into the bottom of the third inning. No score in the ball game. The Yankees making a threat in the top of this inning. That's two on with two outs, and Price bounced to the second baseman. George so Jones is a pretty good indication of what manager Dark has been saying about Stanford all year, that he just won't give in to that hitter. When he got to three and two, it was a breaking ball that Price hit. And even though Mickey Mantle was on deck, the big home run hitter... Stanford was not going to give in the crush and match him with the fastball. He went to the breaking ball, and Tommy was a bit out in front of it, hit a nice round ball with Hiller, and Stanford was out of it. The doctor said it so many times that Stanford was just will not give in to the hitter, and that's been the difference in just being a good and a great pitcher. There's Jimmy Davenport to lead off for the Giants in the bottom of the third inning. Ralph Perry delivers. Bites. He's up the fastball of it. A one strike down. Davenport's batting average, 158. He has three hits to 19 trips. Jimmy has one run batted in. Boy, he's made some great plays at third base throughout this series. There's a foul ball. It'll be out of play. And coming back into the upper deck. A strike two count. Jimmy made one good play today. Might have been in self-defense as Roger Merritt slammed a bullet at him at third base. He got the glove up in time. Very ready. The pitch. Foul ball. He checked his swing. Ball hit his bat, bailed over the giant dugout back into the lower deck. Still strike two. We're in the bottom of the third inning. There's no score in the ball game. Jimmy Davenport, the leadoff man for the Giants. Perry into the windup. Here's the pitch. Inside. He pushed him back. One ball, two strikes. Perry has thrown mostly fastballs today. He will throw a lot of slow curves before the afternoon is over. There's a one-two pitch. Fastball hit on the ground foul. Still a ball and two strikes. You know, I think the wind might uh, affect the pitching somewhere. I think pitchers like to throw the curves into the wind, don't they? When it's falling the way it is, George, they get that big break and they don't have good control of it. I know Terry, we mentioned he came out mighty, mighty early to warm up. Here's a one-two pitch. It's the curve. It's up high. Two and two to Davenport. Not that good, quick breaker, that, that dive bomber type curveball. You can still control that pretty well, but it's a big lollipop and a big roundhouse curveball. That's the one that's a little bit of a problem on a day like today. Terry gets ready. Here's a two-two pitch. High fly ball hit down the right field line. Richardson chasing it along with Merritt. The wind is taking it away from Bobby, and he can't make a play on it. Bobby was having all kinds of trouble. Not only with the 
women are with a high sky in the sun here, and he chased it over near the sand, and he finally overran the ball. It fell behind him. He probably took a look, too, at just how close he was to those stands. Uh, it's a tough thing to get familiar with it because unless you hit the warning track, which is some eight or nine feet from the uh, stands, and you can feel that gravel under your feet, you're really not sure where you are. And there's a lot of room to roam here, and I tell you, you start to run a few feet, you can get lost, and Bobby had all kinds of problems on that one. There's the two-two pitch. A swing and a foul tip. This one comes out of the middle of power coming behind the plate. Still two and two. Jimmy Davenport, the leadoff man for the Giants in the bottom of the third inning. Cut it in. Boy, he's made some great plays at third base throughout this series. There's a foul ball. It'll be out of play. And coming back into the upper deck. A strike two count. Jimmy made one good play today. Might have been in self-defense as Roger Merritt slammed a bullet at him at third base. He got the glove up and down. Are they ready? The pitch. Foul ball. He checked his swing. Ball hit his bat, failed over the giant dugout back into the lower deck. Still strike two. Well, in the bottom of the third inning, there's no score in the ball game. Jimmy Davenport, the leadoff man for the Giants. Terry into the windup. Here's the pitch. Inside, he pushed him back. One ball, two strikes. Terry has thrown mostly fastballs today. He will throw a lot of slow curves before the afternoon is over. Here's the one-two pitch. Fastball hit on the ground foul. Still a ball and two strikes. You know, I think the wind might uh, affect the pitching somewhere. I think pitchers like to throw the curves into the wind, don't they? When it's blowing away, it is, George. You get that big break and you don't have good control of it. I know as Terry, we mentioned it. He came out mighty, mighty early to warm up. Here's the one-two pitch. It's the curve, it's up high. Two and two to Davenport. Not that good, quick breaker, that, that dive bomber type curveball. You can still control that pretty well, but it's a big lollipop and big roundhouse curveball. That's the one that's a little bit of a problem on a day like today. Harry he gets ready. Here's the two two pitch. High fly ball, it's down the right field line. Richardson chasing it along with Maris. The wind is taking it away from Bobby, and he can't make a play on it. He was having all kinds of trouble. Not only with the women, but with a high sky in the sun here, and he chased it over near the stand, and he finally overran the ball. It fell behind him. He probably took a look too at just how close he was to those stands. Uh, it's a tough thing to get familiar with it because unless you hit the warning track, which is some eight or nine feet from the uh, stands, and you can feel that gravel under your feet, you're really not sure where you are. And there's a lot of room to roam here, and I tell you, you start to run a few feet, you can get lost, and Bobby had all kinds of problems on that one. Here's the two-two pitch. A swing and a foul tip. This one comes out of the middle of power coming behind the plate. Still two and two. Jimmy Davenport, the leadoff man for the Giants in the bottom of the third inning. Well, you can hear the rhythmic applause of the Giants fans as they want Davenport to get something going here in the third inning. Ralph Terry delivers another foul ball. This will be out of play. The Yankees have no runs on one hit. No errors. The Giants have no runs, no hits, and they have no errors. The Yankees had a threat going from the top of the inning. They had two on with two out, but Tommy Drake bounced to the second baseman. He done that one. Here's the pitch. A ground ball hits foul down the third baseline. And Davenport making Terry pitch here in the third inning. Terry has good control. He'll be right around the plate all the time. Keeping these pitches low and away, and Davenport just getting a piece of them. Jimmy tilts the back, bounces over the plate. A 2 2 pitch. Another foul ball off to the left. Still two and two. Well, the crowd getting quite a thrill out of this as Davenport has fouled off some seven or eight pitches. It doesn't bother you too much when you catch it when your fellow trying like Davenport one eight deliberately like a Hemus or a Harry Walker used to just follow him off to get that base on ball. That kind of bugs you a little bit. 
Barry gets ready. Let's just do this. There's a high fly ball here in the shallow center field. Richardson going out. Now Bobby's calling for it. He's got it. Boy, he wasn't at all sure of it. Bobby almost down on one knee as he made the catch on that one. Mel was just a bit disgusted because Mickey thought he was going to catch that ball and that flag just flown directly in and put it right to Bobby Richardson. All players constantly checking with the flag. Because it could be a very embarrassing situation. Bill thinks this win, Joe, is going to be a big factor in this ball game before it's over. It seemed to die down for a moment, but right now it is really whipping the flags in center field. Here's Jose Pagan, the shortstop. Harry delivers the curve. He bounces it to third. Boyer has it to throw to first. He's out. Pagan goes out on the first pitch. Third to first. Well, that's two down. We'll bring up the pitcher, Jack Sanford. There's a big round of applause for Sanford as he comes on. Boy, Jack has been quite a pitcher in this World Series. Won the first game, two to nothing. He was tied 2-2 in the second game he pitched going into the eighth inning. Two singles and a home run. And the Yankees won that one 5-3. to three. Ralph Perry delivers. Spikes, he got the curveball on it. A one strike down. Now, Peter Sanford with a lot of respect. He's a pretty good hitter. He swings that bat. Jack's choking the bat as he waits on Perry. The pitch. Strike two. Fastball over the outside part of the plate. A two strike down. We're in the bottom of the third inning. There's two outs with no one on. There's no score in the game. The Giants and the Yankees in the seventh game of the 62 World Series. Perry gets ready. Here's the two strike bit. Fly a ball here in the center field. Mickey Mantle is waiting on this one. He's got it to side to side. Jack Sanford flying to Mantle in center field. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of three. The Giants, nothing. The Yankees, nothing. You're listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game 7 of the World Series of 1962. Messi Mantle will be the leadoff man in the fourth inning for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Roger Maris and then Elson Howard. Messi flied to left field his first time at bat. That was back in the first inning. A switch hitter batting left-handed against the right-hander Jack Sanford. Only one hit in this game so far. That was a single to left field by Tony Kubek. Sanford gets ready, and here's the pitch to Mantle. Ball in the pass. One ball and no strike. While warming up between him and Tom Howard, the catcher was really giving Stanford a low target, hoping that he could uh, get him down. He's been up with all his pitches, and when a fellow is up like that, you try to give as low a target as possible, even out of the strike zone low, to make sure he holds on that ball a little bit longer. Here's the one and oh pitch. Right, he's off the corner with this one. One and one. He turns to look to Stan Landis. A ball and a strike to Mantle, leading off for the Yankees in the fourth inning. A scoreless ball game here at Candlestick Park. Another bright, sunshiny afternoon. Not a cloud in the sky here in San Francisco. Strong breeze blowing in from left field, right straight to home plate. Now, at one time, it was blowing across to the corner in right field, but now it's blowing straight into the plate. A pitch to Mickey. There's a pop fly. It'll be out of play coming back in the crowd. Mantle was trying to get out of the way of a high inside fastball. The hit is fast and sails back. So it's one ball and two strikes. Roger Maris is waiting in the on-deck circle. Sanford taking a lot of time between pitches. Jack is being very careful here today. Still checking his time with Holler. Here's a one two pitch. A swing and a miss. One away, and the batter will be Roger Merritt. Right in a vicious line drive straight to Davenport. His first time at that. The 
Giants go deep and far to the right from there. They play him as a pull hitter all the way. Three infielders on the right side. Sanford delivers outside. One ball and no strike. You talk about stacking the deck, Joe. They not only put three infielders on one side, but they pick him on the outside part of the plate. And put two outfielders behind the three infielders. It's like a convention on that side. It's a 1-0 and pitch. He swings and hits a high fly ball down the left field line. Gavin Ford is chasing it, but this one's going back in the crowd. Well, some spectators, Joe, I think, got hit with that one on the head trying to make a play. He probably found out how tough it is for these fielders today. One ball, one strike to Roger Merritt. Right down on the end of the bat, waiting on Jack Sanford. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. He swings and hits the bouncer to third. Davenport has it, the long throw to first. He's out. Roger Merritt trying to punch the ball in the left field. And a one-hopper right straight to Davenport at third base. Well, there's two down, and the batter will be Elston Howard. is also one. He bounced to the third baseman his first time at bat. We're in the top of the fourth inning. There's two outs with no one on. There's no score in the ball game. Here's the pitch. Frank, you got a fastball over. One strike to Elston Howard. The Yankees have had three base runners. Bobby Richardson has walked twice. Kubrick has had a single. The Giants have not had a base runner in this game. Here's the pitch. A high pop fly on the infield. Scott Miller at second base is calling for it. Now Pagan is there, and Pagan's going to make the play. Miller has called for the ball, and Pagan, when the wind moves in near the bat, is second to make the catch. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of the first half of the fourth inning, the Giants nothing, the Yankees nothing. Back with more action from this classic World Series game of 1962 after this. Let a three-time Indy 500 winner and current national driving champion tell you why he asked for Pennzoil motor oil. Hi, I'm Johnny Rutherford. We use Pennzoil in the race car for top engine protection at high speed. But in my own car, I want engine protection plus the gas mileage. That's why I'm more of a Pennzoil fan now than ever. Because Pennzoil does save gasoline. You see, Pennzoil engineers have made it even more slippery. This means there's less friction where engine metal meets engine metal. So the engine runs easier. And the easier an engine runs, the less gasoline it drinks up. Johnny Rutherford knows gas saving Pennzoil. There's quality in every extra mile. Available in 10W30 and 10W40. Radio is presenting a rebroadcast of Game 7 of the 1962 World Series. The New York Yankees versus the San Francisco Giants. Now we move along into the bottom of the fourth inning. No score in the ball game. Just remember the little things about the different hitters. Uh, Billy Falou, who's the lead off this inning, has a leadoff, man. The left has been going to the curve ball. He's been jumping on the first pitch. He's really become a first ball hitter when he's in the leadoff slot. He uh, jumped on that first one this time. Both Sanford and Terry hooked up once again. I think the individual pitching when these two guys hooked up has been tremendous throughout the series. Well, I don't know. great one going here today. Lou to lead it off. He'll be followed by Chuck Hiller and then Willie Mays. Lou fouled to the first baseman, Sharon, his first time in bat. Police right down on the end of the bat waiting on Ralph Terry. Here's the first pitch. Ball is inside. One ball and no strike. The Yankees play in the left field. And they play deep for Lou. It's a 1-0 and pitch. It's a high fly ball. It's the shallow left. Frank is having trouble with this one. He's moving in now. 
278 batting average in the series. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. He's trying to drill the ball past Davenport at third base. Jimmy playing him close. He's not looking for the bunt, but he's going to be ready in case Boyd has dropped one. Sanford looking in. That's taking a lot of time between pitches. That's his runner at first base. The pitch. That's two. That's a slider over the outside corner. A two-strike count to Cleve Boyer. Bill Scowron opened this inning with a ground ball single to left. He's at first base with no one out. Sanford checks the sign with Howard. Here's a pitch to Cleve. Way outside with this one. Howard hanging that one in the webbing of his mitt. They don't expect Boyer to try to hit that ball to right field. The uh, second baseman Miller is shooting towards the bag. The Pagan is kind of protecting that hole between short and third. It'll be Miller who is over near second base to make the pivot. Boyer is choking the bat as he waits on Sanford. This is a one-two pitch. He swings and hits a liner in the left hand. The middle it is. Sauron on his way to third. Boyer's going to hold on with a single as Willie Mays grabbed that ball and fired it into second base. On a dry field, that ball would have rolled all the way to the fence. It hit in the wet turf and stopped. Willie Mays picked it up, rifled it into second base, and Boyer holds on with a long single. Jack Sanford, I'm talking uh, now with his catcher, hands on his hips. He's a bit disgusted because it was a big high-hanging curveball, and Boyer really jumped on it with a room service pitch, and he just drilled it. I thought it was going to get by as it plugged the gap, but of course, Willie Mays and kind of feel one of the great ones. He's the double play in order by holding Boyer at first base with a real long single, and the serve certainly did stop the call. Well, the Yankees have runners at first and third. No one out, and the batter will be Ralph Perry. Here's the way the Giants are going to play their infield. Davenport, even with the bag at third, he's ready for a play at the plate. The plate, of course, holds against the runner at first base. Miller has moved in a couple of steps from second, and Pagan a step or so at shortstop. Here's a pitch to Terry. Ball, it's in tight. One ball and a strike. Feeling both hands up, uh, George. Uh, Stu Miller, a right-hander, and Billy O'Dell, a left-hander, throwing for the Giants. You can bet everybody's going to be ready in this ball game today. No score in the fifth inning. The Yankees are threatening. Here's a pitch to Terry. Inside again. He almost hit him with a fastball. Ball two in a strike. Scowron opened the inning with a ground ball single to left. Clint Boyer followed with a long single in the left center. And the Yankees have runners at first and third with no one out. Sanford gets set. A pitch to Terry. Inside again, another fastball that puts him back. 3-0 to Terry. Sanford seems to be laboring a little right now. He was just aiming that bit, Joe. Exactly what he was doing. He was aiming it. Uh, his pattern has been to be uh, wild high, and uh, Howard, I'm sure, when I, when I thought I had the pattern one way, like wild high, it's because he's standing straight up to throw it, and vice versa if he's bouncing the ball, it's because he's bending too far and holding on too long. But uh, on this particular wild sequence of carry, he's just been aiming the ball, trying to throw a strike, and hasn't been able to do it. Here's a 3 and pitch. Ball, it's down low. Terry draws a walk. He loads the bases with no one out. And here's manager Al Dart on the run out to the mound. Well, Sanford seemed to be laboring as he was pitching to Terry, especially on the last two pitches. As Joe pointed out, he was just aiming the ball over the plate. Of course, he didn't get him over, so Terry draws a walk, and that's a big play for the Yankees. And the big danger point is thing that Alvin Dodge is trying to protect against is that uh, your pitcher letting up. You don't want him to let up the throw a strike. You want him to keep good stuff. And I'm sure if Alvin Dodge is going to let him in, he hasn't made any decision. He's just standing out there talking while the bullpen is getting hot. West Westrom is up, and he is just giving the sign to Dodge that if he wants to make a move, they are ready, but Stanford will stay in. 
And about all the manager says when he comes out in the spot like that is that you've been a fine pitcher all year by throwing that ball hard. Just cut it loose, go in and let it throw strikes. Give the infielders an option and a chance to make a play for you. Now the bases are loaded with no one out. And the batter will be Tony Kubak. Tony's had one hit and two trips. He slid to center field in the first inning, singled in the third. Manfred looking in to get the sign. Here's the pitch to Kubak. Ball outside. One ball in her sight. All the Giants are playing about halfway on the infield with the exception of Davenport, who is in even with the bag. Jimmy is ready to make a play at the plate. The Pater, Hiller, and Pagan could go either way. It will depend on how hard the ball is hit. If it's hard enough for the double play, more than likely they'll go in that direction. Otherwise, they'll be coming to the plate. Here's the one and oh pitch. Ball, way outside with this one. It's two and oh to two back. Sanford having a little control problem. Georgia might just go a step further on a defense, and the outfield is in very shallow, and on the fly ball, with the way that wind is blowing, it might be a problem for Skyland to score. Of course, the Yankees are letting Sanford pitch, and he's falling behind. He's 2 nothing. Let's see, see what knock uh, Gordon right here. Sanford into the wind-up, the pitch. Strike, he's got the fastball. Kubek was taking all the way on it. Coming in with a fastball around the knees. It's a ball two and a strike one count. A scoreless ball game. We're in the fifth inning. The Yankees threatening. The base is loaded. No one out. Sanford ready. Here's the two one pitch. A ground ball hit to the shortstop. They're going for two. The second one out. Back to first. Two back. The ball to Bagan who flips it over to Hiller. And back to Cepeda in time for the double play as Bill Scowen comes in to score, and the Yankees go out in front one to nothing. Warrior moves to third base with two outs, and the batter will be Bobby Richardson. Bobby's been to the plate twice. He's walked both times. Davenport still playing in close. He'll be watching a bun in this situation. Here's the pitch to Bobby. A swing and a foul. This one back to the screen. He's getting that ball up, and you can see him take his head uh, out on the mound. Sanford, a bit disgusted because he's been getting that ball up in their eyes. And George, even I, who would take a watch at that high curveball because you just can't order a better pitch than that big, nice, high hanging curveball. And when Richardson saw that one, he had a pretty good set at him. I say all the country boys like the high fastball, but I think everybody likes the high fastball. Boy, that's the international pitch. <laughs> well, one strike down to Bobby Richardson. Yankees have a runner at third base with two outs. They lose one to nothing in this game. Sanford gets ready. Here's a fist. High pop fly on the infield. The at first base, moving into foul territory. Is there? <laughs> One run on three hits for the Yankees. No one has one man left. And the score at the end of the first half of the fifth inning. The Yankees won and the Giants nothing. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. You know, Mr. Howell, mm-hmm. this old car here takes more gas than anybody else is in town. No. Yeah. Everything's trading it in. With all that chrome, it ought to be worth a lot. Yeah, but but look, who can buy a new car with the prime rate so high? If the bank prime rate is scaring you out of a new car or truck, ask your GM dealer about GMAC. GMAC has financing right now at rates that make sense. So get that new Chevy, Pontiac, old Buick, Cadillac, or GMC truck you want with help from GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. from Game 7 of the 1962 World Series. Well, we 
is going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Willie McCovey will be the leadoff man. He'll be followed by Orlando Cepeda and then Tom Haller. The Yankees leading in this ball game by a score of one to nothing. Bill Cowan has just called time. He wants a pair of sunglasses from the Yankee dugout. The bat boy moving out. McCovey's 0 for 1 in the game. He fouled to the catcher, Howard, his first time in bat. Well, Sanford had the bases loaded with no one out, but he got out of it with only one run, which was about as well as the Giants could hope for. Here's the pitch. Right. Terry delivers a fastball over the outside corner. Willie McCovey, a tall left-handed batter. Here's the pitch. Outside, trying to get the corner again. One and one to Willie. He'll be followed by Cepeda and then Tom Haller. Bottom of the fifth inning. The Yankees won, the Giants nothing. Terry delivers the curve. He swings and misses. Now pull the string on him and Willie went all the way around. See, when you don't hit a ball and you swing that hard, it does you a lot of good because they got a part of your body that's not, not nice and loose now. What a cut he had in a slow curveball. Wow. Terry delivers a fastball. He got it too high. Two and two to McCovey. He's trying to cut Willie up for another slow serve. Coming in with a fastball around the letters. Terry sets the sign. Here's a two-two pick. Fastball. He gets it high into the air into shallow left center field. Miss Price coming in. He's still moving in. And he makes the catch. Willie McCovey out on a high fly ball in the left field. One away, and the batter will be the first baseman, Orlando Cepeda. Cepeda was a strikeout victim in the first time, in fact. Big right handed batter. Terry delivers the curveball. It's in there. One strike. One to nothing. The Yankees leading. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. So Peter batting with one out and no one on. Terry gets ready. Here's the pitch. Blow curve. He hits it high into the air down the right field line. This one's curving. It's going back into the crowd. Richardson and Maris giving chase. Oh, it's strike two, Mr. Cepeda. <laughs> the Yankees used two singles and a walk to load the bases with no one out, and Kubek getting into a double play, getting the run in. Here's the pitch. This one in the dirt. This one just way out in front of the plate. One hop right into the mid of Elton Howard. You know, you catch those like you've been doing it all your life, and you're really lucky when you come up with it, and you act like, oh, well, I've been catching them like that all year long. I was trying to play it there, the one-handed grab. Terry taking a little bit too much time for Cepeda. Orlando out just for a moment. Here's the one-two pitch. He swings and hits a high fly ball into shallow right field. Richardson moving back is there, and Bobby makes the catch. Well, he almost dropped it. You can see a lot of white in his glove. George, you can see that the slow curveball that Terry really helps his fastball a great deal. He's got a good fastball, but with that slow curveball, it sets up his fastball. He's getting, that, uh, getting the ball by these tough hitters like uh, McCuffey and his tobacco hitting behind him. And if you can score, it don't look now, but there's only been one ground ball hit uh, as far as an assist for him to. That goes to Boyer. There's a bit to Howard. It's down low. One ball, that's right. Tom pops to the shortstop his first time at bat. Giants batting in the fifth inning. Two outs with no one on. The Yankees lead one to nothing. There's a one and open. Oh right. He's got the slow curveball of it. One and one. Howler, a tall left-handed batter. Terry pounds the ball in his glove. Here's a one-one pitch. Fastball, it's in there. Boy, he is threading a needle on the outside corner with a good fastball. 
One ball, two strikes. Howler might have been looking for the curve. He gave no indication he was going to swing at the fastball. Perry into the windup. The one, two pitch. Here's the curve. Bounce right back to the mound. Ralph has it to throw to first base. He's out. Howler goes out. Pitcher to first. No runs, no hits, no arrows, no one left. And the score to end the five, the Yankees won, and the Giants nothing. Game seven of the World Series of 1962 continues after this. You're listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game seven of the World Series of 1962. Well, at the end of five, the Yankees have one run on three hits and no errors. The Giants have no runs, no hits, and they have no errors. Ground ball by Miller in the first to down, and ground ball by Pagan to Boyer, and then ground ball by Tom Howard back to Ralph Perry. The only ground ball is hit off the right hand of the Yankees. And that Sanford got out of a big jam on the fifth, so once again, they're hooked up. Tommy Strike will be the leadoff man for New York. He'll be followed by Nicky Mantle and then Roger Matt. Tommy's goal for two. He fouled with his third baseman back in the first inning, and he bounced the second in the third inning. Johnson's ready, and here's the pitch. High foul ball that will be out of play. And off the third base side. One strike to Tommy. A one to nothing ball game. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Chris jokes the bat as he waits on Sanford. The pitch. He bunched it up in the air. The player is moving in fast and missed the catch. Tommy Strange trying to drag the ball down the first baseline, popped it up. Orlando Cepeda moves into foul territory to make the grab. That's one away, and the batter will be Nicky Mantle. Nicky has slid to left and stuck out in two steps. Yankees won, the Giants nothing here in the sixth inning. Here's a pitch to Mantle. Ball down low. One ball, that's right. Boy, Lou is deep in right field and near the line. May is playing just a little bit in the right center, not too much, and McCovey is playing in straightaway left field. They're all deep. Transferred into the windup, the one and oh pitch. Down low, another curve below the knee. Ball two in a strike. The Yankees picked up a run in the fifth inning. That's been the only scoring in this game. Sanford gets ready. Here's the two and oh pitch. Upside. This one off the corner. Three and oh to Mickey. hasn't been hitting him and has the power of Mallon. You certainly have to be careful. He might turn him loose three and nothing uh, if he can't pick up a quick run. Mickey's right down on the end of the bat waiting. Here's the pitch. Down low. He walked him. I believe he was going to swing at it. He was ready, but the pitch is too low. So Mallon draws a walk. That's the fourth walk given up by Sanford. And the batter is married. Joyce down Larson gets up in the giant bullpen now and starts to loosen up. So that is the third pitcher in the bullpen used by manager Alvin Clark. He's had Odell, Sue Miller, and now Don Larson. Roger Merritt has lined to the third baseman and bounced to the third baseman in two trips. Mantle at first base with one out here in the sixth inning. Sanford gets that. It's a quick start of first and he's out. Obviously, he was going to move on the first pitch. 
Manford caught him leaning, made a quick snap throw to first, and Cepeda put the tag on him. The pitch to Maris. Outside. One ball, one strike. Once again, the Giants are in the ship. They have three infielders on the right side. Taking a little time as he looks in. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Upside again. Just off the corner with a good fastball. Ball two in strike one. I would imagine in this spot that Merritt will be going to right field. The first two times he was going to left, but batting now with two outs and no one on, he has but one thing in mind. That's to try to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Sanford ready. A two-run pitch. There's a tap down the first baseline. Cepeda picks it up. The race to the bag. Orlando wins it. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of the first time to pitch running. The Yankees won, the Giants nothing. This original 1962 World Series broadcast will continue on the NBC Radio Network. When you're faced with tedious grass trimming chores, stand up to your lawn with a weed eater trimmer from True Value Hardware Stores. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you the snippy model is the ideal choice for average lawns because it quickly trims a 10 inch path and weighs just three and a half pounds for less tiring operation. For larger jobs, get the weed eater needy trimmer that trims and sweeps a 16 inch path. Both of these time and work savers feature tap and go heads and are available at participating True Value Hardware Stores. And home center. NBC Radio Sports is presenting a classic World Series broadcast. Game 7 of 1962. Featuring superstars Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Mickey Mantle, and Roger Maris. Now we go into the bottom of the sixth inning. The Yankees out in front of the Giants by a score of one to nothing here in the seventh game. Of the 1962 World Series. Boy, this is it. You play all season long, and you come right down to one big ball game. And another capacity house here in Candlestick Park today, watching this seventh game. The attendance exactly as was yesterday, George, 43,948. They damned everybody they could get in yesterday, and they all come back today. And I'll tell you something, Joe, there's a lot of people downtown wanting to come. He said, sir. <laughs> Jimmy Davenport will lead off for the Giants. He'll be followed by Pagan and then Jack Sanford. Harry delivers. Right. He got the fastball over around the knees. Davenport up to the second baseman his first time at bat. And he's a right-handed batter. There's a one strike pitch. A curveball hit on the ground foul down the third baseline. And rolling to the bullpen in right field. Left field. A strike two count. Ralph Perry against Jack Sanford. Third meeting in this series for these two pitches. There's a two strike pitch. Ball. He got it outside. One and two to Davenport. That pitch was close. Terry trying to get Davenport to swing at a bad one. Yankees playing straight away, not too deep. Ralph into the windup. Here's a one-two pitch. High foul ball. This will be out of play. Coming over behind the giant dugout. Still one ball, two strikes. The Yankees picked up a run in the fifth inning. That's been the only scoring in the ball game. They used two singles and a walk to load the bases. Then Kubek get into a fast double play. Scouring coming in with a run. Here's the pitch. Another foul ball. Almost the same spot. Still one ball, two strikes. Fan 
canvas. The umpire behind the plate moving out. Throws a new ball out to Ralph Terry. Ralph gets ready. The pitch. Curve. It's way up high. That'll even the count at two and two. Jimmy Davenport, leadoff man for the Giants in the sixth inning. Jimmy with a 158 batting average. He's been to the plate 20 times in this series and he's had three hits. He's been a sterling performer at third base for the Giants. Here's the 2 2 pitch. High pop fly outside of first. Garrett is chasing. If this is going to be trouble, it is Embassy back in the first row. Allen and Bobby Richardson chasing it over near the barrier landed in the first row. Still two and two to Davenport. You remember Jimmy's first trip he fouled off about eight or nine pitches. And he's right back at it again. Jimmy jokes about as he waits on Terry. There's the two-two pitch. Outside. Nelson Howard was ready to fire down to third. He thought he had a tall third strike, but Landis said it was off the corner. So it's three and two to Davenport. Now he's taking a little time. Walked out in front of the plate, flipped the ball back to Terry. Jose, a right-handed batter. 412 batting average starting the series. There's a high fly ball down the third baseline. This is serving over near the seat. Boy is chasing it, but it's going back in the crowd. He always looks for those escape valves as far as outfield is concerned. Uh, for example, in the stadium, it's right center and left center. In the polo ground, dead center field, make them hit that way. Here in this ball for us, with this one ball in the way it is today, it would be from the left field foul line all the way over to right center field. Because it is a tough one blowing in. You can get that ball up and into the right hand here. Let him hit it that way. Ralph Terry, look again. For Don Waiting. Here's the pitch. And swings and pops it up outside of third. Warrior is chasing it. The wind is bringing it over near the seat. He's there and makes the catch. Boy, Elson Howard is right there with him, too. Kelly has picked up some pointers, Joe, in this play. He goes all the way down. As he knows the wind is bringing it back the whole way. Then wait to see where that ball's going to land. You better take off. They made a for this ballpark. Rupert Dennis, a player, said one day. He said this is the only ballpark where you can sit in the dugout and read the morning paper as it blows by. Well, there's two down, and the batter will be Jack Stanford, the pitcher. Jack fly to mine with first time at bat. He swings and lines it in the right field. Man will take it. He's going to hold on with a single. Jack Stanford is Ball down low. One ball and a strike. 
A runner at first with two outs. We're in the bottom of the sixth. The Yankees lead one to nothing. Terry has just given up his first hit, and the Giants have their first base run in the game. A pitch to a lose. A bouncing ball down the third baseline. Boy, they will have to hurry the throw. He got him. A slow bounder to third. Boyer flips it over to Scowen. No runs on one hit. There were no errors. One man left. And the score at the end of six. The Yankees won and the Giants nothing. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. Now, more action from Game 7 of the 1962 World Series. Well, we're going to the seventh inning. The Yankees in front of the Giants, one to nothing. It'll be Elston Howard to lead off for New York. And it'll be followed by Bill Sharon and then Fleet Boyer. He's been to the plate twice. He bounced to the third baseman in the second inning and popped to the shortstop in the fourth inning. The only scoring in this ball game coming in the fifth inning. The Yankees loaded the bases with no one out on two singles and a walk, and two bats bounced into a double play. The run coming across. One run, three hits, and no errors for New York. No runs on one hit, and no errors for the Giants. Sanford taking a little time. Jack was a base runner in the sixth inning. He's a little slow getting back to the mound. Here's the pitch. Ball. It's down low. One ball and this strike. Well, you talk about the pressure on the ball game in the seventh game of the series. How about the umpires? Especially the fellow behind the plate, Stan Landis. He's got a lot of important calls to make today. Here's a strike. That ball coming in around the knees. Like the old thing, George, uh, when they do the great job, you hardly even know they're out there. We hardly recognize them because of the outstanding job that all of them have done. Here's a 1-1 one -one pick. A high pop fly down the right field line. This is curving back into the crowd. Felipe Lou is chasing it. He had no chance to get it. One ball, two strikes. Howard, Scowron, and Boyer will be the Yankee batters here in the seventh inning. They lead the Giants one to nothing. Taking a look in to Tom Howard. Kelly's choking the bat a little bit with two strikes. Here's the pitch. Ball, it's in tight. That's ball coming in high and tight. A ball, two, and a strike, two count. Giants playing deep and around to the left for Elson Howard. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Outside. He tried to get the corner with a slider. Three and two there, Ellie. Moose Sharon is waiting in the on-deck circle. Yankees batting in the seventh inning. They lead one to nothing. No one out, no one on. A full count to the catcher Howard. Here's the pitch. He swings and bounces his foul down the third baseline. Go three and two. with a new baseball, rubbing it up, taking a little time. Jack has been a slow and deliberate pitcher here today in this all-important ball game. Here's the pitch. A ground foul right at the plate. Ball bounced up, hit Howard, and Howard grabbed it on the first hop. Still three and two. Howard talking to himself as he walked away from home plate and looked like he had his face and just didn't hit it. One of the real joys of catching is listening to the conversation these hitters when they talk to themselves. Hank Sauer, who was with this guy in the organization, one of the best. He's talking, he's answering himself, and he's always get on himself for the good. Here's the pitch. A swing on there. Jack Stanford coming in with a curveball on the 3 2 pitch, and Elston Howard strikes out. That's one away, and the batter will be Bill Stallings. 
Well, Lewis has had one hit in two trips today. Bounced to the shortstop in the second inning, singled in the fifth. Sanford ready. Here's the pitch. This is a high fly ball hit into deep center field. May is going back. Now he's going to have to come in in the left center. And McCarty is there, finally, to make the play. Willie May chased that one all over the outfield. And finally, Willie McCarty in left center made the play. George, I've seen some off-field plays during the course of this year where, as far as you think you're watching an old team on top movie, one fellow will be ready to make the play and zing, somebody will cut him by and make it, and there you saw Willie ready to make it, and McCovey made it easily. Wind is a big factor here. McCovey acts like he had it all the way, and Mays have been chasing it all over the outfield. Well, he's two down, and the batter will be Fleet Boyer. Fleet one for two in this game. Takes a strike around the letters. Boyer hit the ball hard both times. He lined to a little in right field in the third inning. In the fifth inning, he lined a long single in the left center. On a dry day, it would have been an extra base hit and would have driven in a run. Here's a ground ball hit up the middle. Pagan can't get it. He goes into center field. Boyer getting his second hit. A ground ball through the middle to center field. Now, that's a big play for the Yankees, Joe. Get that picture up and out of there. They're bringing that pitcher to the plate here instead of making him a leadoff man in the eighth inning. Well, we're waiting right now for Terry to come on. That's why an eighth spot is always such a tough one, George. You don't get that good uh, ball ahead if you have a fellow in scoring yeah. position. You have to widen his strike zone and try to drive it in. And a spot like this, you've got to go for the unexpected pitch to get that base hit. And hope you get your pitcher up there and not make a leadoff man out of him. Nice round of applause for Terry as he comes on. Boy, he's been quite a pitcher here today. He has allowed one hit, and that's been the only base runner for the Giants. Boy, you're at first base with two outs. The pitch to Terry. A pass. One ball, no strike. Ralph struck out in the third inning. And in the fifth inning, he drew a walk. <laughs> Terry told me before the ball game today he had one big ambition. That's to get a hit from the series. Here's the pitch. A ground ball hit in the left field. There's his face hit. Just out of the reach of Davenport. And Ralph Terry comes through with a ground single to left. So the Yankees, after the first two batters have been retired here in the seventh inning, are threatening. They have runners at first and second. Two outs, and the batter will be Tony Kubek. A tip number five for New York. Kubek had one hit in three trips today. By the center field in the first inning, singled in the third, get into a double play in the fifth. Both times the Giants jumped up again. The left hander is Billy O'Dell, and the right hander Don Larson. Two on, two out. Fans are taking a little time as he looks in. Here's a pitch to Kubek. Ball, it's up high. One ball and no strike. Sanford has been quite a pitcher here today. I'd say the only difference in this performance today and the other two that he's given in this World Series, he's been high today. He has not been able to get the ball down around the knees as he would like to do. Here's a 1-0 and pitch. Here's a liner down the left field line. The cover is chasing it. It's serving foul back into the crowd. Boy, Willie is playing him right over there on the line. One ball, one strike. Kubak will hit a lot of balls in the left field. I'll tell you another thing right here, Joe. It's going to be tough for Boyer to score on a base hit to the outfield unless he pulls it into right. Now, Mays and McCovey are both playing in close. Manfred gets that. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. There's a high fly ball hit in the left center field. McCovey and Mays are both there. McCovey is calling for it. He's got it to try to side. No runs on two hits. Two men left. And the score is the first half of seven minutes. And he's won the Giants nothing. Game seven of the World Series of 1962 continues after this. Now listen, but listen quick. Because it comes and goes just like that. The Pennzoil Chaparral, driven by national champion Johnny Rutherford. Here it comes again, all bright and brilliant in its traditional Pennzoil yellow color. That's a $40,000 engine that just roared by, turning out 9,500 torturous RPM. 
does it mile after mile after hard money mile, race after race after race. The Pennzoil Chaparral. It has Pennzoil written on it and Pennzoil in it. Protection for a winner. Pennzoil Motor Oil. Protection for cars like the Chaparral and cars like yours. Ask for it. You're listening to a classic World Series from the archives of NBC Radio Sports. Game 7 of the World Series of 1962. Now he's going to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Giants trailing the Yankees by a score of one to nothing. He'll be Chuck Killer to lead off for San Francisco. He'll be followed by Willie Mays and then Willie McCovey. The crowd standing here for the seventh inning stretch, and they are singing with the band as they are playing in deep center field. Probably the giant right side. Yeah, they're hard to pick it up here on the radio booth. Chuck Heller, the batter, he's 0 for 2 in the game. Here's the pitch. He bites it up in the air. Terry spears it. A good play by Terry. Had the ball gotten over his head, more than likely Hiller would have been on. But Terry, moving back of the mound, reached up and speared the pop flat. So there's one away, and the batter is Willie May. <laughs> Willie's off the two. He slides the left and slides the center in two steps. Yankees keep going around to the left for Willie May. Terry delivers the curveball. He lines it down the left field line. Trace racing into the corner. He got it a one-handed catch by Trace. He caught the ball, then went out of our sight, back into the corner, but he hung on to it in the webbing of his glove. Willie May is making a bid for an extra base hit into the corner in left field. Is robbed on a fine play by Tommy Trace. Two down, and the batter will be Willie McCovey. Boy, it's amazing how this kid, Tom Strake, has made the move from the infield to the outfield, and he has not missed a step. He has taken it in stride. Which is one of the plays of this series right there. <laughs> Willie McCovey, the batter. Willie has fouled to the catcher and tried to left in two steps. Here's the pitch. There's a long foul ball down the right field line. This one will go all the way out of the park. A one strike down for Willie. Bill Stafford, a right-hander, and Bud Daly, a left-hander, throwing in the bullpen. Manager to Ralph House wants to keep him ready. Harry gets ready. A pitch to McCovey. Ball down low. He sets his swing on a slow curve. One ball, one strike. The Giants are batting in the seventh inning. There's two outs with no one on. The Yankees lead one to nothing. Here's the one-one pitch. He swings and hits a drive in the deep center. Now he's chasing it. He's getting it. He's trying to get it. All the way to the finish. Here's McCovey going in the second. He's going to try for something. No, he's not in time. One 410 feet away over Mickey Mantle's head in the deep center field, and he is right in the third base with a stand up triple. In fact, he made a big turn in the third base as if he might come on in, but he was very wisely held up by Whitey Lockman. So the Giants have a tying run at third base with two outs, and the batter will be Orlando Cepeda. Nelson Howard time right now as he goes out to the mound for a short conference with his pitcher. The ball hit by McCovey was on a line. It never did get very high. The wind had no chance to 
Tuesday back. A runner at third with two outs. Very ready. Here's the pitch. Cepeda takes the fastball up high. One ball and a strike. Orlando struck out in the second. Off to Bobby Richardson in the fifth inning. Taking a little time, looks in to get the sign. Here's a one and oh pitch. He swings and hits a high foul to the out of play down the right field line. One ball, one strike. The Yankees won, the Giants nothing. We're in the seventh inning. Willie Mosavi is the third base with two outs. It's only the second hit given up by Ralph Perry. Well, the crowd has come alive, as you can hear. They are roaring, wanting to pay to come through. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. A swing and a miss on a bad curveball. He foul tipped it. So Sam Lambert right into the mitt. Terry delivering a low outside curve. That's the play to the bike. One ball, two strikes. Straight away, everybody back on the infield. Here's a one two pitch. Foul ball. Look at the out of play. Terry trying to get the fastball by him. Evidently, figuring that Cepeda would be looking for a serve, but Orlando had a ripple at it. Still one ball, two strikes. Once again, Howard going out to the mound for a conference with Terry. It's going to take a little time right now as he stands on the mound talking to Ralph Terry. Action in the Yankee bullpen. Bill Stafford, the right-hander, and Bud Daly, a left-hander, are throwing. Well, this is it. There's no saving anybody for tomorrow and next week. This is the seventh ball game of the 62 World Series. Terry gets ready. Here's the one-two pick. A swing and a miss, and stuck him out. The Pater going for a high fastball strikes out. No runs on one hit, there were no errors, one man left, and the score at the end of seven, the Yankees won, the Giants nothing. Back with more action from this classic World Series game of 1962 after this. NBC Radio is presenting a rebroadcast of Game 7 of the 1962 World Series, the New York Yankees versus the San Francisco Giants. Well, at the end of 7, the Yankees have one run on five hits, and they have no errors. The Giants have no run on two hits, and they have no errors. As Stanford gets ready to go here in the eighth inning, a giant bullpen comes alive again. Billy O'Dell, a left-hander, and Stu Miller, a right-hander, are throwing. They have been throwing along with Don Larson throughout the afternoon. Well, Bobby Richardson will lead it off. Bobby has walked twice and fouled to the first baseman. So officially, he's over one in this game. Sanford gets ready. Here's the pitch to Bobby. He swings and hits a high hopper to the shortstop. Pagan has it to throw to first. He is right at first base. The throw was up high. It got away from Cepeda. And Bobby Richardson is safe at first. It'll be an error. Charged against the shortstop. Well, the Yankees have a runner at first base. There's no one out, and the batter will be Tommy Trace. Sanford taking a little time as he goes over to talk to his third baseman, Davenport, probably discussing the bunt situation that very definitely is in order here. The Yankees lead by one. We're in the eighth inning. Bobby Richardson is first base with no one out. And Whitey Ford is throwing in the bullpen for the Yankees. How about that? Whitey was a starting pitcher in yesterday's ball game. He's warming up today. Sanford gets that. Here's the pitch to Trace. Right, he got the fastball over the outside corner. Tommy squared around. He was ready to bunt. Pulled the bat back, and Stan Landers went up to the right hand. Well, with Mantle and Merritt coming up, 
Manager Ralph House wants to move Bobby Richardson down in the scoring position. Sanford ready. Here's the pitch. Outside. Fest is ready to bunt. One ball, one strike. Davenport is playing in close to third. Jimmy's about five steps in front of the bag and moves in as Sanford delivers. Cepeda holding against the runner, and he'll move in with the pitch. Tommy Stress, batting left handed waiting on Sanford. Here's a 1-1 pitch. He bunts at his foul. This one is rolling behind the plate. One ball, two strikes. Tommy is trying to get the bunt down the first baseline as Davenport is racing in from third. It would almost be suicide to bunt the ball to him. Fouls it back. One ball and two strikes. Bamford working slowly here in the eighth inning. Yankees with a one-run lead have a runner at first base, no one out. Here's the pitch. Outside. They check your swing just in time on a fastball that was off the corner. And we'll even the count at two and two. Mickey Mantle is waiting in the on-deck circle. Sanford checks his runner. The pitch. Outside again. Once again, Jack trying to thread the needle on the outside corner is missed. So it's three and two to try. Well, we'll watch the runner. He might be moving on his three-two pitch. Sanford has picked the runner off first base today, so Bobby Richardson, of course, is going to be mighty careful getting a lead. Sanford gets that. That's a quick throw to first. Bobby back in town. The full count to Tommy Trey. A runner at first base, no one out. Here's the pitch. There goes the runner. Here's a liner. One hop to the shortstop and gets away from him. Here's a throw to first. He's safe at first base. Trey hit that one like a bullet. A low liner that hit right in front of Pagan. Bounced out of his glove over towards second base. He picked it up, made the throw to first, but it was not in time to get Trey. It'll be an infield single for Tommy. Base hit number six for the Yankees. Puts runners at first and second with no one out. And the batter will be Mickey Mantle. Well, there's the value of moving on the 3-2 pitch. Had Richardson not been moving, he would have been an easy out at second base. But Pagan, realizing he had no chance to get Bobby, hurried his throw to first base, but it was too late to get Trey. So two on, no one out. And Mickey Mantle, the batter. Mickey's 0 for 2 in this game. He walked his last time. Sanford gets set. Here's a pitch to Mantle. Ball in tight. One ball and no strike. Well, Davenport is playing in close to third. Jimmy's ready for the bun in case Mickey bunts. Cepeda, Hiller, and Pagan are playing about halfway. They are not looking for the bun. In fact, Cepeda is deeper than anybody else on the infield. Sanford checks his runners. Here's a 1 0 pitch. A swing and a foul. This one back into the crowd. One ball, one strike. The good thing about having a batter like Mantle at the plate in a bunt situation, you don't have to worry too much about a double play ball, as Mickey has such tremendous speed. That doesn't mean he cannot hit into a double play, but. But chances are against it. So instead of a bunt play, as in this situation, manager Ralph House can let Mickey swing away, figuring that he'll still move at least one runner up. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Outside. Ball two and strike one. Billy O'Dell, a left hander, is still throwing in the bullpen, and Don Larson has replaced Sue Miller for the Giants. So it's Larson and O'Dell, a right hander and a left hander. Mickey Mantle right down on the end of the bat waiting on Jack Sanford there's two on with no one out here in the eighth inning the Yankees lead the Giants by a score of one to nothing they've out hit the Giants six to two Bobby Richardson is down at second base Tommy Trace at first base Sanford gets ready here's the two-one pitch a swing and a miss a low curveball around the knees and Mantle had a ripple on it a ball two and a strike two count. Roger Maris is waiting in the on deck circle. Manfred 
Robert taking a lot of time. Looks down to Tom Howler to get the sign. Looks back to second to check his runner. Here's the pitch. Down low, he's got the curve in the dirt. Nice pickup by Howler, who went down on both knees to block it. So it's three and two to Mantle. Will the runners be moving on this three-two pitch? We'll wait and see. It paid off for Ralph House when he had Richardson running on a three-two pitch to Craig. Oh, we'll check him again. Sanford checking the sign. Shaking his head yes to Tom Howler. Here's the three-two pitch. There's a liner to right field. It's in there. Bobby Richardson coming to third, but he's going to be held up. Mickey Mantle lined the ball just out of the reach of the second baseman, Hiller. Now, Bobby Richardson had started back to second. He thought Hiller might catch the ball. So he was held up at third. So the bases are loaded with no one out, and here's Al Dart coming out. We might get a pitching change here. I believe we are. He is giving the call to the bullpen, and it's going to be Billy O'Dell. Applause here at Sanford Park in San Francisco, and Jack Sanford leaves the mound. And he has been a tremendous pitcher for the San Francisco Giants this year, not only here in the World Series, but throughout the season. And they're giving him a standing applause as he leaves the mound. The Yankees have loaded the bases here in the eighth inning with no one out. An error and two singles have filled the sacks, and Billy O'Dell, a left-hander, will be coming on the pitch. To Roger Maris. This will be Odell's third appearance in the World Series. He started the first ball game. He has a record of no wins and one defeat. He starts with a loss in the first game. He's pitched 10 and one third innings, giving up 12 hits. Six runs have all been earned. He's walked three and struck out eight. Billy pitched in relief in the fourth game of the series and saved that ball game. Don Larson was the winning pitcher. So Billy completes his warm-up tosses. Roger Maris steps in. The base is loaded with no one out. The Yankees leading one to nothing. The hit by Mantle was number seven off Stanford. Yankees are out hit the Giants seven to two. Well, Al Dice doesn't want to give up another run. He is playing his infield in close with the bases loaded and no one out. Maris is 0 for 3 in this game. Here's the first pitch. Strikes, he's got a fastball over. One strike for the rod. He lined the third, bounced the third, and bounced to the first baseman. Richardson, Frank, and Mantle are the Yankee base runners. Odell ready. Here's the pitch. A ground ball hit to the second baseman. Miller is coming to the plate with it. He's out. That's the first. He's safe on a close play. Almost a double play. Maris hit the ball to Chuck Hiller, who fired it then to Howard. He stepped on the plate and fired it right back to Cepeda at first. Maris beats the relay. So Rod is safe on the fielder's short. The base is still loaded. One out. And Elston Howard will be the batter. Al Dark has raced out of the dugout. He has a right-hander throwing in the bullpen, but there'll be no pitching change. He's going along with Billy O'Dell, a left-hander, against the right-handed hitting Elson Howard. Kelly's over for three in this game. Counts the third, off the short, and struck out. O'Dell gets ready. Here's the pitch to Howard. Right, fastball over the outside corner. Giants trying to get out of a jam here in the eighth inning. The Yankees have the bases loaded with one out. Odell into the windup. Here's the pitch. High foul ball. This will be out of play coming back into the lower deck. Strike two. Now Billy coming on with the bases loaded and no one out. Got Roger Maris to bounce to the second baseman. Worked out at the plate. Now it's a strike two count to Elson Howard. <laughs> oh, 
Good hell, catching the sign. Here's the two-strike right pitch. There's a ground ball at third, might be a double play. Stepped on the bag to throw, he's out. This original 1962 World Series broadcast will continue on the NBC Radio Network. Hi, Pat Summerall. You know, the trouble with buying paint is that you really don't know how it's going to look or last until after you've painted. That's why True Value Hardware Stores make their own True Test paint. Regardless of your needs and budget, your True Value Hardware Store dealer can help you choose the best possible paint and the colors you want at the price you can afford to pay. His knowledge also extends to knowing which applicators will give you the best results from quality True Test paints available only at participating True Value Hardware stores. Sports is presenting a classic World Series broadcast, Game 7 of 1962, featuring superstars Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Mickey Mantle, and Roger Maris. A Billy O'Dell coming on in relief with the bases loaded and no one out, turned in a sparkling job, got out of it without a run, so it's still a one to nothing ball game, the Yankees leading as they go into the bottom of the eighth inning. Haller will be the leadoff man. He'll be followed by Jimmy Davenport, then Jose Pagan. Al Perry taking a little extra time as he goes through his warm-up coffee. Action in the Yankee bullpen. Bud Daly, a left-hander, and Bill Trafford, a right-hander. They have been throwing off and on throughout the ball game. Nothing. The Yankees lead. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning of the seventh game of the 1962 World Series. Tom Heller has popped the short and bounced to the pitcher in two trips. Here's Terry first pitch. There's a fly ball in the left center field. Price is racing in. Barry makes the catch. Tom Heller goes out on the first pitch to stretch in left center. That's one away, and the batter will be Jimmy Davenport. Jimmy just made a fine play on a hard hit ground ball off the bat of Elston Howard. Kept on third base, flipped it to first, turning it into a fast double play. Jimmy has popped the second and fly to left in two trips today. Harry taking a little time. Here's the sign, here's the pitch. Ball, it's down low. One ball in his sight. The Yankees picked up a run in the fifth inning. That's been the only scoring in the game. It's a one and open. I pop fly on the infield. Here's Boyer coming into foul ground, calling for it. And he's there, makes the catch. Jimmy Davenport fouls to the third baseman. Well, there's two down. And Jose Pagan is scheduled to be the batter, but... We're going to get a pinch batter. I believe it's Ed Bailey. Second to be sure. Ed Bailey, left-handed hitting catcher, is coming on. Here's the announcement coming over to the public address. So Al Dark trailing by one run here in the eighth inning, sending up a left-handed batter for his shortstop for gone. batting with two outs and no one on. He's taking a little time before he gets in. Terry just waiting for Bailey to get set. That's the sign. Here's the first pick. Curveball. He got it over. One strike. Ralph pulled the string on him. 
chances are deep and around to the right for Bailey. That is strictly a full header. He's out of the box for just a moment, gets back in. Bobby Richardson right on the edge of the outfield grass. Here's a one strike pitch. He checked his swing on a low curve, this Van Lambert. One ball, one strike. The Yankees have one run on seven hits and no errors. The Giants have no runs on two hits. They've committed one error. Terry, still looking in. Helms the ball in his glove. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. A foul ball. It's back on the screen. Terry coming in with a fast ball around the letters. One ball, two strikes. He retired the first 17 batters he faced here today before Sanford singled with two outs in the sixth inning. And he gave up a triple to McCovey with two outs in the seventh inning. And the only two giant hits. One ball and two strikes to Bailey. Here's the pitch. Down low. I believe in the count at two and two. Terry trying to get Bailey to go for a bad pitch. batting for Jose Pagan here in the bottom of the eighth with two outs and no one on. Ed getting out, jumped to Terry, got ready. Now we're ready again. Here's the two-two pitch. Foul ball, this one back in the crowd. Still two and two. In the fifth inning, the Yankees used two singles and a walk to load the bases. Then Kubek bounced to the shortstop for Don, who made the double play. Cowan coming in to score the only run of this ball game. And he's had the bases loaded in the eighth inning with no one out, but they failed to score. Here's the 2 2 pitch. There's a fly ball hit outside of first place. Cowan is coming over. He's got the room on it. Still chasing it, he makes the catch. Ed Bailey fouls to the first baseman. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end of eight. The Yankees won, the Giants nothing. We'll be back with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. And now, more action from game seven of the 1962 World Series. the ninth inning here at Candlestick Park, and the Yankees are leading by a score of one to nothing. Boy, you couldn't ask for a finer ball game in the final game of the World Series. Bill Scowron will lead off for the Yankees. He'll be followed by Boyer and then Terry. Here's a fastball up high. One ball and a strike. Billy O'Dell pitching in relief of Jack Sanford, who turned in another great performance here today in his third World Series start. The pitch in the dirt, scooped up by Haller. A ball two and a no-strike count. Odell came on in the eighth inning with the bases loaded and no one out. He got Merritt on a ground ball to the second baseman. The play was made at the plate. And then Howard hit into a fast double play. Here's the 2-0 and pitch to Scowen. He swings and fouls it off. From sailing back into the upper deck behind the Giant dugout. That's a ball two and a strike one count. Now, Billy O'Dell didn't like the baseball. He wants a new one. Offers it in and Stan Landon sends a new one out to the mound. Moose is waiting. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Down low. That's a fastball. Low it in. Three and one to Scowron. Odell taking a little time as he looks into Howard. Here's the three-one pitch. He swings and hits a long fly ball down the left field line, a serving foul and going back into the crowd. So it's three and two to Scowron. Lead off man for the Yankees in the ninth inning. They lead the Giants one to nothing here in the seventh game. Boy, this is it. Right down to the wire. The 
new shortstop for the Giants here in the ninth inning is Ernie Bowman. Pagan went out for the fence batter, Ed Bailey. And Ernie Bowman has gone in to play shortstop. Odell taking a lot of time here on the 3-2 pitch. Ready? Here it is. A ground ball hit for the shortstop. Bowman has it. Here's a throw to first. He's out. Bill Cowan goes out. Starts to first. One away, and the batter will be Cletus Boyer. Cletus two for three in this game. He lined the right field in the third inning. Single in the fifth, and again in the seventh. His single in the fifth inning was a key blow that sent Scowan all the way to third, where he scored on the double play ball. Top of the ninth is one out with no one on. Yankees won, the Giants nothing. The pitch to Boyer hit hard to third. Davenport knocks it down. Here's the throw to first. He's out. Another good play by Jimmy Davenport as Boyer sent a screamer down the third baseline. Jimmy blocked it. Ball rolled out in front of him. He picked it up, made the throw to Cepeda. A two down, and here's Ralph Perry. Highly partisan crowd here in Candlestick Park, giving a roaring salute to Ralph Carey as he comes on to bat here in the top of the ninth. Ralph has been a tremendous pitcher for the Yankees. He's had one hit in the ball game. Odell delivers, he fouls it back. One strike. Ralph has struck out, walked, and singled. So he's one for two. Right-handed batter. Facing the left-hander, Billy O'Dell. The pitch. He swings and misses on a curve. Right two. Two outs, but no one on. We're in the top of the ninth inning. The Yankees lead by one. with more exciting action from the seventh game of the 1962 World Series after this. Bud Bailey for the Yankees. 
Perry taking a little time. He wants to be sure his defensive alignment is where he wants him to play a loose. Here's the pitch to Matty. Ball, it's outside. One ball and no strike. A one to nothing ball game, right down to the wire here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Here's the one and no pitch. A high pop fly outside of first base. It's made blow into the seat. Howard is chasing it. Now the dugout, he can't make a play. He went right into the giant dugout. Elson Howard, boy, was staying with it. He went right into the giant dugout all the way. But he couldn't quite make the play, so it's one ball and one strike to a lose. That ball at one time was near the foul line, but the strong breeze blowing kept tearing it away from Howard and just out of his reach. Third base is playing on the grass. Everybody else back on the infield. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Curve ball. It's too low. A ball two and a strike one count. Matty Alou in a pinch hitting roll in game number four had a key double down the left field line. Boyer, of course, has to play him in close. He's one of the fastest base runners in this series. Here's the pitch. He bounced down the first baseline. Terry chasing it. He can't get it. Matty Alou dragging a bus just past Ralph Terry. And he beats it out for an infield single. That's hit number three for the Giants. But the tying run at first base with no one out. And the batter will be Felipe Lou. The Yankees are looking for the bunt. The boys are moving in close to third base. Here's a pitch. He bunts it up in the air. Howard chasing it. He can't get it. One strike to Felipe. Giants, of course, trying to move this time run down to second base. We have Filler and Willie May coming up. The one to nothing ball game here in the ninth. The Yankees leading. Alou at first base. No one out. Matty Alou at first base. Philippe Alou, the batter, with a one strike down. The token toss over the first base. Terry just reminding the Lou that he's keeping an eye on it. Now, step set. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it back. The Lou had a ripple at a high fastball. He was trying to drill that one by Boyer at third base. Fouled it back on the screen. So Terry is out in front with a strike two count. Elson Howard calls time, races out to the mound for a conversation with Terry. Bill Stafford, a right-hander, and Bud Daly, a left-hander, throwing in the bullpen. Howard coming back behind the plate. Terry gets set. Here's the pitch. A king and a miss, and stuck him out. Felipe Lou goes down swinging. That's one away, and the batter will be Scott Hiller. Hiller is 0 for 3. He bounced to first, fly to center, and he popped to the pitcher, trying to beat out a run in the seventh inning. Well, the Giants have one of their fastest base runners, if not their fastest, at first base. He's carrying the tying run. One out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Boy, you can almost feel the tension all the way here to the radio booth. The pitch to Hiller. He swings and tucks it up. It's going to be out of play. This one is drifting back into the crowd. One strike to Chuck. Ralph Perry all the way for the Yankees. Jack Stanford. The starting pitcher for the Giants today. Billy O'Dell will leave him in the eighth inning. It's a one-strike count to Chuck Yeller. 
Matty Alou at first base. One out, bottom of the ninth inning. Matty's taking a big lead at first. Terry Sexton. Here's the pitch. He bunts down the third baseline. It's foul. Boy, that was a dandy. Teller placed a bunt down the third baseline. He just rolled outside the line. Boy, you had no chance to get him. Plate was playing in close, but this was a perfect bunt. Oh, it's a strike two count, Teller. Once again, Howard, out to the mound for a conference with Terry. Everything riding here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Howard coming back behind the plate. Terry checks his runner at first. The pitch. Foul ball back in the crowd. Ralph trying to get the fastball by him around the letters. Killer fouled it back. Oh, well, Billy Pierce is throwing in the bullpen for the Giants. They tied up with go ahead. More than likely, he'll be the pitcher. Harry he gets that. Here's the pitch. There's another foul ball coming back to the crowd. A strike two count to Chuck Hiller. The amazing thing about these pitches to Hiller with two strikes on him, Terry has come right in there with good fastballs. He is not trying to make Hiller go for a bad pitch. He tried to overpower him with two good fastballs, thinking that Duck had to be expecting most anything in this spot. Ralph taking the look in. That's the runner at first base. Here's the pitch. Foul ball. This one off to the left, rolling to the Yankee dugout. You know the most helpless people in the ballpark in a situation like this are the ball players sitting in the dugout. There is nothing they can do, nothing at all, but just wait and hope. Those on the field or with a bat in their hand, they have a chance. They can do something. Doc Keller choking the bat, waiting. Here's the pitch. In the dirt. Nice pickup by Howard. That was a big play. Giants would like to move a loo down to second base. It's a ball one, strike two count to Chuck Ellis. Matty Alou opened this inning with a butt single down the first baseline. Matty was batting for Billy O'Dell. Philippe Alou, after bunting and missing a pitch, swung at the next two and struck out. Now Chuck Keller, the batter, one ball, two strikes. Harry delivers. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Miller goes down swinging on a low curveball. So there's two down, and it's all up to Willie Mays. And I would imagine if the Giants fans had their way in the ball club, this is the man they'd want to play. A runner at first base, two out, and Willie Mays, the batter. He has been the big man for this ball club, not only this year, but for 12 long years. So it'll be Terry against Mays. And that is matching strength against strength here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Willie has fly to left, fly to center, and Lyon deep to left. Chris made a great play on him in the seventh inning to rob him of an extra base hit. Willie right down on the end of the bat. The pitch. Ball. It's inside. That's ball. One and over to Willie May. Matty Alou at first base for two outs. What everybody has moved forward on the edge of his seat. Here's the pitch. That ball in tight. Almost hit him with this one. A ball two and a no strike count. Terry coming in with two good fastballs, trying to get Willie on the fifth. Got him in a little bit too close. The Yankees shoot. Around to the left and very deep in the outfield. Warriors deep and near the line at third base. A pitch to Willie Mays. He swings and lines it down the right end of the line. That's when he's in there. Willie's on his way to second. The runner's going to be held at third base. Willie Mays is going to be the batter for the Giants. Matty Alou was held up at the last moment. It looked like he was going to make a try for it. 
Bobby Richardson took the relay from Roger Maris and rifled a throw into Elson Howard. One hop, he would have had him at the plate. And Whitey Lockman very wisely held him up. So the Giants have runners at second and third with two outs. Willie McCovey, the batter, and here's Ralph House coming out to the mound. George Cowell and Joe Gargiola at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. And this place is a madhouse right now. The Yankees lead one to nothing, the bottom of the ninth. The Giants have runners at second and third with two outs, and Willie McCovey is the batter. Willie's had one hit. That was a long triple. Here's a pitch. He swings and sends a long bell to right field. Harris is chasing it. He's curving. He's foul. It's going in the seat. Willie McCovey making a bid. Round one. He's from the right. The ball did not have a distance to get out of the ballpark. Maris going over near the line, but it's curved back into the crowd. Oh, it's one strike to Willie. And boy, everything is riding on every pitch here in the bottom of the ninth. McCovey fouled to the catcher, fly to left, and tripled in the deep center field. Big, tall, left-handed batter right down on the end of the bat. Ralph Perry gets back. Here's the pitch to Willie. There's a line of straight to Richardson. The ball game is over and the World Series is over. Willie McCovey hit it like a bullet. A line drive right straight to Bobby Richardson at second base. Had that ball got out of his reach, the Giants would have been the winner. Now it's the Yankees who have mobbed Ralph Perry in the center of the diamond, and well, they should. What a pitcher Ralph Perry was here today. He picked a four-hit shutout going right down to the bottom of the ninth. A line drive off the bat of Willie McCovey going straight into the glove of Bobby Richardson at second base. So in the bottom of the ninth, it's no run on two hits for the Giants. There were no errors, two men left. The final score of the ball game, the Yankees win it one to nothing. Uh, this broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Uh, and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Our engineer here today has been Don Hall. Our NBC producer has been Hal Ashby. And now to wind up this 1962 World Series broadcast, let's go down and pick up Joe Gary Giola and some of those victorious Yankees. Joe is down in the Yankee clubhouse right now. Joe, take over. Ralph Perry finally got him. Now you got him? Yeah. Yeah. Ralph Perry of the New York Yankees here. Right now. Uh, Joe, if you don't mind, I'd like to say this to Ralph. Two years ago, a guy named Bill Mazeroski, in a home run in the last half of the ninth inning to win a World Series. And here now is Ralph Perry, who came back two years later to uh, win the seventh game, and the skipper, Ralph House. Ralph, uh, you waited two years for that one. I'd like to say two things, Mel. I think I'm probably the luckiest man in the country today. The guy hit the ball so hard, right at him. I thank God for his second chance. He really, he really did a job, I tell you, Mel, and uh, you really got to give these fellas a lot of credit. It, it was quite a scary. Why? It's the greatest thing in the world, right here. You know that great time, my friend. Wonderful, Joe. It's a good place for me. <laughs> You're going to be resting for, for a while now? Oh, All right. Whitey, you were ready to come back, huh? Well, yeah. I, Ralph asked me if I wanted to throw a uh, thing with me later, but they had uh, three other left handers down here in Stafford ready. This wasn't an easy one for you, huh? No, I wish we could end it yesterday, but uh, I'm glad the way it turned out. May I have uh, Joe Garrett Joe just a word with a guy who has uh, been in the middle and a lot of these things, uh, sometimes on the winning side, sometimes uh, on the other side. Uh, Joe, good night, Joe. A native of San Francisco making his home back there now. Joe, well, I want to tell you, Mel, it was a wonderful world series, and I thought this, it, it wound up just the way I thought it was. Just the last out. 
the Giants are a wonderful ball club, and just for that one line drive, made the difference for winning and losing. And I will say this is a typical Yankee team. Uh, as far as this particular club, why, as long as the kicks are down, it seems like they pick them up. The 1962 World Series ended with the Yankees winning their 20th World Championship. How about that? And I'll be back with some closing words in just a moment. Here again is Mel Allen. Stan, you know, it was a Yankee tradition to come through with a win when the ships were down. And that's kind of what they did back in 1962. And it was a vindication for Ralph Perry. Yes, that was far as... As you and I have said before, Ralph Perry two years before was the GOAT. And he came back to be the hero. I've always wanted to know from somebody, Mel, and can I ask you, I always wondered why Ralph Howard didn't have William McCovey perfectly passed in that ninth inning to pitch to Orlando Cepeda, who wasn't particularly having a good series. That's a good question, Stan. When you take a batter like William McCovey, he's always dangerous. He's a guy that can beat you. But if, as long as your pitcher is going pretty good and you hope that he keeps the ball away from that man's power, you've got a better chance of striking out a McCubby and then you have the Cepeda. Cepeda also had power, but he could put the ball in play more frequently than McCubby and less the chance of striking out Cepeda. But fundamentally, here was the reason. Alou was on third and Mays was on second. There were two outs. Now, if you walk McCovey, now you're leading by only one run. That means you've got to get the ball over the plate somewhere to the next hitter. And in the process of trying to perhaps keep the ball a little fine or not making too good a pitch, you might walk that next batter and then force them the tying run, which then would put the Giants in a position to uh, perhaps win it in that ninth inning. So he decided just, uh, according to the Yankee skipper, just decided to go ahead and take his chances with McCovey. And to prove that baseball is a game of inches, McCovey almost won it. I've never seen the ball hit any harder. If he'd have gotten up under that ball, it would have uh, wound up not only over the right field fence, but it would have wound up on some ship sailing by out in the bay and it <laughs> might have wound up in uh, the Orient somewhere. But... Uh, I talked to Bobby Richardson afterwards, and he said, that ball came to me like a bullet. And he said, I was just scared to death. It was going to bounce off my glove and hit me in the face and put me in a hospital. But uh, he said, fortunately, it came right at me, and I sort of gave with it. It has been an inch or so either way, pure basis. And two runs would have scored on it. And the Giants would have won the World Series. Absolutely. But that's uh, the World Series. That's baseball. And you do take chances. In a given situation, sometimes the percentage will work for you, sometimes it won't. You know, Bobby Richardson tells me that sometimes he wakes up in the middle of the night with a nightmare. He dropped the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Please try and fans and be with us next week as NBC Radio keeps baseball on the air with World Series facts. We really can't say if there's going to be a settlement in the baseball strike. I wish we knew something more about it. I certainly wish. They would settle it, but as long as the strike does continue, NBC Radio will continue bringing you World Series Classic. Stan, what's on tap for next week? Next week, Classic World Series from 1964, 65, and 68, Mel. We'll be listening to games featuring the St. Louis Cardinals, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Minnesota Twins, the Detroit Tigers. And the New York Yankees, Stan, don't forget that. I wouldn't do that, Mel. <laughs> as a matter of fact, for such a long while... It'd be pretty tough doing any World Series in which if the Yankees wouldn't have been at least half of the fall classic. Uh, I remember, uh, for example, from 1949 through 1964, the Yankees were in the World Series 14 times during the uh, out of 16 years. This program is authorized under rights granted by Major League Baseball and is presented by permission of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball. The recordings used on today's rebroadcast come from the archives of the Museum of Broadcasting and the Library of Congress. Our special thanks to Jerry Gibson and Ron Simon at the Library and Museum and to Catherine Lim at NBC Records Administration. Our historical advisors are Milt Richman of UPI and the gentleman sitting next to me today, Stan Martin of NBC Radio Sports. This presentation of World Series Classics 
was engineered by Sherry Wagner and Steve Arthur, directed by Wendy Maxwell and Cassandra Pitter, and produced by Guy Ludwig. This is Mel Allen, along with Stan Martin, inviting you to join us next week for more World Series Fashion. This has been a presentation of NBC's Radio 4.